And can you see my screen? Can I there we go. It? Yep. Uh, perfect. There we go. All right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We will get started shortly. I see lots of people coming in the virtual door. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I see we've got lots of people in attendance today and I'm sure more folks will be joining us as the time goes on. Thank you for spending some of your Tuesday evening with us. We have a beautiful first day of spring today to celebrate our, or to commemorate our spring training here at ANJAC. So my name is Jennifer Coffey, for those of you who don't know me. I am the executive director of ANJAC, the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commission. And I am joined this evening by my esteemed colleagues, Nandini Checo, Sh uh, Sheila baker Gajal, Elizabeth Ritter. And we have some wonderful speakers with us here this morning, uh, this morning, this evening. <laughs> Um, Dan Bachalis from Hamilton uh, down in South Jersey and Paul uh, Wolitsky from uh, uh, Franklin Township in Somerset. So now that we have a goodly number of people in the room, let's kick off our very first session of our 2023 Fundamentals for Effective Environmental Commissions. This evening, we will be speaking about EC powers and responsibilities. This is a multi-part spring training session that we have designed for uh, new environmental commissioners. So if you find yourself new in an EC and say, oh my goodness, what the heck does this mean? What am I required to do? What am I legally responsible for? What should I be doing? We've got the answers for you. And if you are an experienced hand, we look forward to you sharing your stories um, and asking some questions from uh, your experience perspective. Uh, before we begin, I want to let everyone know that we are recording the session and we will be sending the links out after all of the sessions have completed this week. We want to ask people if you could change your uh, name to be your full name and your municipality so that we know where you're coming from. I think that's an option. I'm in presenter mode here, so I can't see all of the details. Uh, we're also going to ask you to send us your questions throughout this presentation in the Q&A function on Zoom. You'll see that we have both the Q&A and the chat function working. We are going to be posting some links for you throughout the presentation in the chat section, but we ask that you post your questions in the Q&A and that will enable us to keep track and answer them better for you. If we don't get to your question or you have a particularly sticky situation, that you wanna talk out with us and, and do a little bit of uh, strategizing, please do feel free to email us at info at .org. That email is monitored uh, regularly and the person who monitors that email will get you in touch with the ANJAC staff member who is best able to answer your question. So info at .org is your best way to get in touch with us. I want to draw attention to ANJAC's mission statement. We have updated the wordage in our mission statement. ANJAC's board of directors voted last fall to update our mission statement to reflect our commitment to ensuring equitable and healthy communities, as well as always protecting our natural resources as ANJAC has done since our founding in 1969. And ANJAC advances its mission and we're committed to advancing our mission by engaging in diverse and inclusive practices through leadership, partnership, education, and advocacy. Our number one priority is to serve you, the environmental commissioners who serve as volunteer municipal officials throughout the state of New Jersey. We know those of you who are currently serving and have served in the past uh, are equally active in many cases, and we encourage you to attend our sessions and stay in touch with us, and we are here as a resource for you. In addition to being here for you, for the issues that are of most importance to your municipality, 
The priority issues that ANJAC is working to address in a proactive way are combating a climate crisis, advancing environmental justice, and ending plastic pollution. These issues, as many of you know, are interrelated. They connect to one another in many, many ways, ending plastic pollution and banning incineration or pyrolysis of plastic pollution is an environmental justice issue. Combating the climate crisis is affecting all of us in various and diverse ways, whether we're talking about flooding or we're concerned about habitat corridors for a rapidly changing climate. So these are the issues in which we are engaging on the local level and the statewide level, because New Jersey is at the forefront of all of these issues. These are our sessions for the rest of the week. Just wanted to give you a little preview and a reminder um, in case they're not on your calendar. Uh, powers and responsibilities tonight. Uh, municipal ERIs, NRIs tomorrow at noon. Um, everything you wanted to know about permitting for stormwater and stormwater utilities tomorrow evening. And then we're doing master plans and ordinances on Thursday. Um, as well as um, whatever we didn't cover from green infrastructure and more storm water on Thursday evening. We hope to see many of you in person on April 1st, no fool. So please come join us at the Fort Monmouth Recreation Center on Saturday, April 1st in the morning for some snacks and some networking. We're going to be talking about advanced strategies and we would very much love to see your face. It's been few and far between that we've had the opportunity to connect with you in person for the past few years. So we look forward to seeing you hopefully on April 1st in person. And we are celebrating Women's History Month in March. And we wanna draw attention to some of our incredible founders and founding advocates at ANJAC and make note that we have established the Candice or Candy, for those of us who knew her, McKee Ashman Fund. This fund supports ANJAC's uh, open space grants for municipalities. So the open space grant um, call for proposals is open right now. Maybe we can get that, that link um, if we have one active in our chat at some point, but uh, you should have received emails about it and we're looking forward to reviewing your proposals. If you go to anjack.org backslash donate um, and you are able to donate, we very much appreciate it. And if you would like to restrict your donation to those open space municipal grants, you can do so by indicating that it is for the Candace McKee Ashman Fund. We encourage you also to renew your memberships. Uh, you could go to anjack.org backslash membership. We appreciate the approximately 300 ECs that we work with, um, most of whom are members of ANJAC. It is because of you that we are able to do programming. We're able to put out our quarterly magazine, the ANJAC report. We're able to have staff on hand to address the info at anjack.org email and answer your questions and work with you on strategy for your priorities in your municipality. So a little bit like the public radio model, we're still here, we will offer our programming to you, but we cannot do it without your support. So we ask that if you um, have not yet reviewed, uh, renewed your membership, through your municipality to go ahead and um, give your, your clerk or your administrator a nudge on that. And if you don't know, go ahead and send us an email at info at anjack.org and we can let you know if you'd re you have renewed yet for the year. Uh, we're, we're closing in on the intro here. We're gonna get to the meat of the program, but here is a, a fancy QR code. We're gonna post the link uh, in the chat as well for you. But if you've got your phone handy and your camera, you can go ahead and uh, take a photo or use your camera app to scan over this QR code and it will pop up a website for you. What are we asking from you? We would like you to consider filling out this very short membership interest form because we wanna know what issues are of most important to you, what you are challenged with working with so that we can better align our resources to serve you. So we wanna know what you need from us so that we can deliver that. And we'll post that in the chat as well. Uh, and please keep in touch with us. So this QR code will just take you to anjack.org. Many of you know how to get there. And many of you know how to find us on YouTube at Anjack Views, on Facebook at Anjack, and on Instagram at Anjack Posts. So please follow us on social media. 
uh, keep in touch with us uh, via our website, which we are rapidly updating at this point. And um, I just wanna thank you again for being with us this evening and for spending some of this wonderfully beautiful Tuesday night to hear from our experts. With that, I wanna turn it over to Sheila baker Grigeau, our Resource Center Manager, and she's gonna kick off this evening's uh, presentation and then we'll introduce you to our other speaker. So thank you again for being here. I'm gonna hang out in the background, uh, but turn it over to Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Great, thank you. Here we go. Let me get this into the correct mode. Apply from the beginning. Here we go. Can you see that? I hope. Yep, we've got it. Looks good. Great. Looks good. Okay. Sheila. So thank you, um, everybody, for showing up this evening and spending your time with us. It's greatly appreciated. And we will get right to business. So today we are going to be talking about, um, we're going to do a brief overview of the EC law and the powers and responsibilities of the Environmental Commission. So we're gonna start with a poll. Liz, if you could um, uh, set that poll to, if you could launch that poll, please. Um, we wanna find out um, how long you've served on your EC or your Environmental Advisory Commission um, or committee, excuse me. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're not on one, so that would be never. Um, you may be somebody, you may be one of our frequent flyers. You might be, have been there more than six years, you might have been there 20 years. Um, but we just wanna get an idea of, um, of who is in the room. So I can't see, can I see? I can't see um, how that's working. You can probably see that, Liz, so you can let me know. I will um, indeed. We got about uh, 15 more people to participate. I'll give it another second or two. Okay, great. But I will share it. So, and just a reminder to everybody that you will have access to all of these slides and things. So you don't need to stress yourself about uh, taking notes or doing screenshots or anything. Um, you'll have access to everything um, after, after we're done. So here we have our results. Thank you. So we have uh, most people look like they're they're pretty new commissioners. We have zero to one years. Um, we have forty percent. One to three years. We have twenty three percent. We have uh, eight percent have never been on a commission or committee. Um, three to six years, fourteen percent, and more than six years we have fourteen percent. So so we have a, a nice range. So thank you to all of you for showing up this evening. And let's see. Let me see. Okay, so what the law requires. So the EC serves, excuse me, in an advisory role. Um, as you probably already discovered, uh, commissions are appointed by the mayor or in some cases the governing body to advise local government on the best ways to safeguard the town's environment. Unlike the planning board and zoning board of adjustment, you don't get to make land use decisions on the behalf of the, the municipality, but you do serve in an advisory capacity. This has an enormous value in making sure that environmental concerns are always have local government's attention. Now, this picture is um, the Metuchen Environmental Commission going through a visioning process for a greenway project, which is a very exciting process. And um, I'd like to make a note for those of you who are along the Essex Hudson Greenway line, um, which is, uh, it's gonna be a, a rails to trails project that the New Jersey has just purchased um, the trails for. Um, you should, it's gonna be start in Jersey City, it's gonna go to Montclair, and it's gonna go through Secaucus, Kearney, Newark, Belleville, Bloomfield, and Glenn Ridge. So I encourage you, if you're in any, in any of those towns, to reach out to your elected officials about having input. There are lots of great opportunities for stormwater management, stormwater storage, and green infrastructure opportunities. So uh, as well as all the other, a um, lot of benefits that, that come out of that, that kind of a project. So uh, get in touch with your elected officials and find out what the process is and um, so that you can get your voice heard and have your input on that. So what the law requires. Um, the state of New Jersey considers the work of environmental commissions so important that it created a statute specifically establishing the role of an environmental commission and its powers. It specifically states that a commission shall have five to seven members and two alternates. So the alternate members um, will participate, but they do not get to vote unless they are filling in for one of the regular members. Um, also, one of the commission members should also be a member of the planning board. We often refer to this person as the planning board liaison. So each town should have an ordinance establishing its environmental commission and its roles and responsibilities. Typically, the ordinance will use some of the same language that's in the statute. 
You can find the complete statute in your environmental commissioner's handbook if you have one. Um, it's also on our website. And uh, Liz, I believe you have the link um, in that list of links that I gave. And so uh, that can get dropped into the chat and you can get a copy of the environmental commissioner's handbook for yourself. So um, you'll also find the statute in our ANJIC resource papers that's on environmental commissions in New Jersey. So the first homework assignment, and that's something for you to start doing now in another window, you don't have to stress yourself, but I maybe after we're done tonight or tomorrow, um, is to find your establishing ordinance and see what it says. See um, what the specific uh, roles and responsibilities are laid out for you um, in your ordinance. So there are different kinds of uh, for different formats for ECs. And this one I'm pointing out because Cranford has associate members. They have over 20 members. Um, so not all of those will be voting members, but all of them are helping out and doing great work. And you can see here that uh, uh, they mentioned some titles. There's a fire prevention official, a health official, sanitarium. I used to live in uh, Maplewood and our, our environmental advisory committee, uh, we had an elected official liaison, we had a director of public works, the health officer, um, and eventually we had the engineer because his job merged with the director of public works. But as many people as you can get um, from the municipality to participate, um, the, the stronger your commission will be and the more you'll be able to get done. So another format that um, some uh, commissions are doing is having junior commissioners. So in Wyckoff, they have three a year and they, they typically have a project that they're working on. Um, when I was in Maplewood, we used to have a, uh, we used to have a youth member of our environmental advisory committee. And so a question that I have for all of you is, do you have youth members? And um, you know, so please drop that in the chat. I'd be really interested to find out uh, which commissions and committees have youth members um, working alongside them. So what's the difference? You hear there, me talking about environmental commissions, environmental advisory committees, what are the differences? So um, first of all, as I mentioned before, read and know your ordinance. Um, a commission is established by ordinance. So if a governing body wants to remove them, it has to be done with another ordinance. Um, the enabling statute provides stability because it's a legislative act. Uh, with a committee, um, they're often ad hoc groups um, that are appointed by the governing body on a yearly basis. Although in, in Maplewood, when I was on environmental advisory committee, we had an establishing ordinance and I actually looked up Wall Township when I was putting this together and they also have one. Um, so it is possible to have an ordinance, but it's not necessarily the case, it's not required. Um, a governing body could abolish a committee um, that did not have an ordinance um, or appoint a whole new group of members by resolution with no public notice and no public hearing and without cause. So the, uh, the ordinance gives you a lot of protection and stability. Um, now a green team um, is usually established by a resolution. Um, resolutions are expressions of an opinion or policy of the governing body. Uh, green teams became popular after the Sustainable Jersey was launched in 2009. And depending on the town, you can either have a unique um, green team or you can have a joint EC and green team. Um, this example, I, was, I noticed that Hamilton Township has their environmental commission and then they had this environment advisory commission on green initiatives, which functions as their green team. And that is a subset of the environmental commission. Um, and there are also county environmental commissions. So I used to be on the Essex County Environmental Commission and I've heard that the Camden County Environmental Commission is getting reinvigorated. Um, I believe Bergen County has an environmental council. So another question I have for people is, what about your county? Do you have an environmental commission or environmental board of some sort? Um, I'd like to hear what kind of uh, countywide organizations you might be able to work with. So what the law requires, um, EC members serve three year terms, unless it's a brand new commission, in which case you'd have a one or two or three year uh, terms so that everyone's terms don't expire at once. They would have them staggered. Um, commissions are subject to the sunshine law, which means you have to advertise your meetings in advance just like the planning board or the town council. It also means that anytime you have enough members of your commission present at any meeting or function, it must be advertised. A quorum would be a simple majority of appointed members. Um, and just a quick side note, you uh, should be careful not to discuss commission business via group email, because if you have a quorum of members participating, then that constitutes a meeting. 
Um, so Liz has some links that she's going to drop into the chat. Um, one of them is from Rutgers on the Sunshine Law, and another one is uh, one that's specifically about um, Open Public Meeting Acts and technology, and so you can get some more information there. Uh, the statute also states that you shall keep records of your meetings and make an annual report to the governing body, so you will be taking minutes. Hopefully you can put your agendas and minutes up on the township website if you have one or on your on your own web website if you have one. Um, the more transparent you are, the more people will be aware of what you're doing and willing or motivated to help you out and get involved. And also, um, you shall keep an index of open areas, both publicly and privately owned, including open marshland, swamps, and other wetlands in order to obtain information on the proper use of such areas. So um, an open space index. All right, so then we move on to commission powers. Another of the uh, commission's powers described in the enabling statute is to study and make recommendations on natural resources, noise, landscape protection, and environmental appearance, as well as plants and wildlife. So you can see it gives you a pretty broad area of stewardship. The enabling statute also says that you should not only create an index of open space, but also recommend to the municipality plans and programs regarding the use of such areas to be included in the master plan. That might typically take the form of an open space plan, which gets adopted into the master plan. Many commissions have taken an active role in their town's open space plans. So this is homework assignment number two. After uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow, um, have a look around and look for your open space plan and uh, see if you have an open space index. See what kind of resources are already out there that are um, uh, regarding your open space. And then we come to the environmental resource inventory. Um, also called the natural resource inventory. So the ERI or the NRI is a compilation of maps, lists, and descriptions of all the town's environmental features and resources. Um, it should also serve as a foundation and documentation for resource protection ordinances, land use planning, and reviewing site plans. Every town should have one, although many don't. Um, if you're in the Highlands region, um, they've already done it for you. If you just Google Highlands Council and ERI, you'll, you'll find it and you'll be able to um, get at all of that information, all the maps. Um, so that's your third homework assignment is to find your ERI or your NRI and, uh, and see, um, see, see what's in there. Um, we'll be talking a lot more about ERIs. I believe it's tomorrow at noon, um, tomorrow sometime. So um, there's a lot more coming up on that. So maybe before tomorrow's session, have a quick look and see if you can find your ERI. So here we have another poll question, which requires an ordinance to be established? So um, Liz, if you could please, thank you very much. So, all right, so um, this is kind of maybe an easier one. So I'd actually be really interested to know. Well, we'll find out. All right, so yes, environmental commission. So the, um, the, the, the it's kind of a trick question, but not really, um, but which requires uh, the ordinance because the environmental commission requires the ordinance. The other ones can be established by ordinance, but it is not required. So thank you very much for participating in that poll. And here, let me see, we're moving on. So now you have an EC, so now what? So you have to get organized. So where do you start with that? Um, with the mission statement. So every EC needs a mission statement to express its guiding purpose for being. When you're writing your EC's mission statement, you might be able to borrow language from your establishing ordinance. Uh, while the state statute lays out the powers of environmental commissions, the state of mission of each EC should reflect the unique characters and needs of the particular municipality. This provides a good opportunity to sit down with the mayor and council and agree on what the EC should be focusing on in your town. So you can see here with Paramus that I actually can't totally see because things are in the way, um, that they talk about protecting and improving and advising and educating and outreach and inspiring the community 
educating and inspiring the community, practicing sustainability and improving the quality of life. And then it stipulates how, what um, activities should they be involved in, supporting the farmer's market, promoting and organizing cleanup events, fielding concerns, and advising the town on best practices. So there we go. So the Bloomfield uh, um, Environmental Commission, this is their mission statement. And so they're advising and collaborating um, with businesses and residents and neighboring communities. These are all very important collaborators um, with the goal of effective and efficient use of natural ecosystems, social systems, and financial resources. So they go on to lay out their objectives and um, they're to study and make re recommendations to the township council boards and agencies on issues that affect the natural and built environment. As you can see, that's a lot of categories. And so they will be busy. Um, up front, it states that they review and comment on development proposals, township ordinances, and state mandates. They identify environmental goals for the town. They support education of the public and the local government. And then there's a focus on maintenance and conservation of green space open space and wetlands throughout the township. So here's some other uh, mission statements. Um, you'll see, notice that the Summit EC has a very aspirational mission using words like leadership and vision and sustainability. And that's definitely how they're regarded over there in Summit. And then we have um, Mantaloking, and I apologize if I mispronounce, that might be happening. Um, but they are on the Barnegat Peninsula and very connected to the waters that surround it. So that's reflected in their mission statement. So then you have your mission statement and the next thing is bylaws. And how does an EC operate? So you'll have in there, um, is, is listed out here, attendance requirements, meeting requirements, cancellation policy. Um, what kind of subcommittees are you gonna have and, and who will be participating in those? And then preparation and distributing of meeting minutes. So here's some sample by, here's sample bylaws from Jersey City. So this section of the bylaws addresses scheduling of meetings and complying with the Sunshine Law. You'll notice that it also allows uh, not more than five minutes of public comment per session. So per person, excuse me. But this can really help when you have members of the public. Um, sometimes uh, people are very passionate and they um, might have a preamble to their question. And if you limit it to five minutes, then you're likely to get uh, right to the meat of their, their concerns. So um, that's a good idea to help you keep your me meetings moving along if you need to. Um, and then now we have the Hamilton Township Environmental uh, Commission. So they have their associate members listed out and then they have this for um, attendance requirements. So if someone is unexcused from two consecutive meetings or four total meetings, then that would constitute recommendation for removal of such member from the commission with just cause. And this isn't meant to be um, you know, harsh on the members, but sometimes people, their lives get busy and they kind of fall off and you need to you know, find out if they're willing, if they're not willing to, um, to go to the meetings and participate, then you can speak with them and uh, look for someone who could replace them. So now you have your uh, mission statement and your bylaws, what are you gonna do? So without goals, it can be easy to slip into a rut of just handling whatever issues come through the door. While you can definitely stay busy that way, it would certainly be an advantage to identify what environmental needs your EC could be addressing with the talents and people that you have on board. When you set priorities and establish specific goals, you're more likely to accomplish more for your town. So here we have the goals from Manchester Township. And um, uh, so actually, hold on just a minute, please. I need to move something so I can actually look at this. Okay, so um, Manchester, so they're collaborating with the green team. Um, they're participating in Green Day events. They're organizing uh, cleanup of open space. Um, they're considering partnering with Pinelands Preservation Alliance. Um, and then they will provide timely recommendations to the planning uh, board on development applications, um, improve communication and develop a relationship with the zoning board of adjustment. So they've got some relationship goals here. Uh, continue to hold regular educational presentations on topics of public interest, promote recreational use of open space and develop a relationship with the town's open space committee. So they're really working on their relationships and how they can uh, be most effective. Review and make recommendations on the township's master plan. And then um, review and make recommendations on the township's updated stormwater management guidelines um, and, and uh, facilitate ins installation of rain gardens throughout the town. 
So you'll be hearing more tomorrow night about the new MS4 permits and what that will mean for your town. So make sure to tune in for that session. Okay, here we go. So here, and I didn't even, uh, let's see, this is uh, Franklin Township in Somerset County, um, their goals and objectives. Now they say here, this is goal number one, this is goal number two, but there's clearly a lot more goals involved. They, um, they're just very organized. Somebody's very organized on their commission. And so they are talking about working with a lot of different organizations. They're talking about the community gardens, um, environmental stewardship awards, um, updating and maintaining their website, which is where I got all this information, um, sponsoring a build a rain barrel workshop by the New Jersey Water Supply Authority, um, doing stream cleanup, um, publishing articles in the Franklin Times. So if you can get a quarterly or monthly column in a local news newsletter or um, some kind of uh, uh, magazine, um, it'd be great for your EC and for the town, or maybe even just occasional ones, but uh, you know, writing up about what you're doing and what you'd like people to be involved in will just help um, get a lot more people to, uh, to help you out in your endeavors. Um, they talk here in number 10 is about um, uh, searching out opportunities to advise and encourage some youth oriented environmental groups. And then here you see also and maintaining your ERI. So that is goal number one. And then this is goal number two with all of these. So these, this is more, uh, a lot more, a lot of relationships and collaborations that you see here. So um, uh, provide support for the township, um, for the Somerset County Improvement Authority's Renewable Energy Initiative Program, uh, coordinate with the Township Advisory Board of Health, develop resolutions on environmental issues affecting the township, coordinate with ANJEC on policy statements regarding environmental issues, working with the green team, um, working with Stony Brook Millstone Watershed Association, gathering information on pest management for the township. These are all very specific. They've really thought them out. Um, uh, representing the Township and Sustainable Raritan uh, River Initiative. Uh, so, and then down here, supporting NJEC with their uh, project to promote access to the Lower Raritan uh, Assistance Support Mill Millstone River Flood Commission. Um, so there are a lot of collaborations and relationships here. And um, so they're gonna get a lot done, clearly. So poll question number three. Um, why, who should an EC reach out to for building relationships and trust? All of the above. So, and Paul, I have to tell you that I didn't realize when I, when I, uh, uh, for, when I was um, putting this together, I didn't realize that uh, Franklin Township was going to be in the room. So that's really nice. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. you. Great for work. all the stuff you're showing. <laughs> so do we have that poll? That's not something that I can launch. We could actually, I mean, this this is an easy one, I think. Oh, here we go. So um, you can see, and, and there are other organizations in addition to these. Um, I think of uh, watershed ambassadors. Um, you could reach out to your watershed ambassadors. Um, they have them throughout the state. Um, regional groups, county groups. So there are a lot of uh, people that you could collaborate with and uh, build relationships with. So all of the above, there we go. Thank you, very good. So, all right, then we'll move on. So how to become an influential EC. So some of our first advice is to give electeds easy wins. And what we mean by that is it's a good way to go about this is to have a small project that your mayor and council can use, um, excuse me, can use as a photo or publicity opportunity for the town. And as was mentioned before, ANJIC gives small grants for this very purpose. So you could have a small demonstration project in your town. And as you see here, Berkeley Heights uh, mayor and councilman uh, were there for the ribbon cutting for a community garden. So this is, you know, this is giving your elected officials a, a nice win, something nice to be involved with. Um, ANJEC also has resources such as movies and games that can be used for outreach. And I will I'll go into those in more detail in a little bit. 
but um, you know, we have DVDs and we have the screening rights for the DVDs. So you could plan a movie night and you could promote it. It costs no money. Um, allow your elected officials to come and speak to the residents directly about environmental issues. So you could have them come to your um, movie night and have a few minutes ahead of time where they can address their constituents. Um, another thing is attend council and or committee meetings. Just showing your face can make a difference and demonstrate to your officials that you are invested in the town. It will also give you a unique insight into what's happening in the town and allow you to speak publicly in support or in opposition of uh, certain projects. Do your research ahead of time and find out what's on the agenda. You don't have to go to every meeting, but you should check and see what's on the agenda and choose some key times to attend. Be willing to listen and to learn. This goes along with attending meetings. Sometimes something as simple as asking a clarifying question about the budget or about a project at a council meeting goes a long way um, with your officials. Thanks and spanks. This is a term used in political organizing realm. It refers to holding your officials accountable, thanking them for doing well or holding them accountable for what they did if they don't. However, this is farther down the road if you're starting the relationship from the beginning. It's important to let your officials know beforehand what your stance is. Whether it's in support of an ordinance or wanting a specific improvement for a site plan, they can't improve it if you don't tell them. And finally, don't take it personally. More often than not, there are outside forces that control their political decisions. There are budget pressures, election realities, all kinds of things um, that are impacting the decision. This doesn't mean you should stop advocating. It means if you do not succeed, it is not because of a personal failure. There we go. So again, to relationships. Relationships build success. Um, so you wanna look for a win-win proposition. Um, tell them what you need and, um, and what you can do for them. So an example in the middle here is Berkeley Heights. Uh, let's see, right here. Um, so they did an adopted drain program and they did a pilot for one year. They got a grant to cover the cost um, and it was through nj.adoptedrain.org. And I believe you'll be hearing more about that because I think Paul Walitsky said that they're, they're pursuing that in Franklin Township. So we'll learn more about that. But um, Berkeley Heights did this for one year. They did their pilot program. And then the Department of Public Works thought it was so great um, because uh, for adopted drain programs, they, people adopt a drain. It's kind of what it sounds like, but you are responsible for clearing it of debris so that um, there's no uh, pollution in there and it's not filled with uh, leaves and things like that. So that when there is storm water, it has free access to get into your storm drains. So um, they did that for a year and the Department of Public Works really liked it and said we'll take it over this is a it's a win for us so we'll we'll take over the uh, the fees for this and um so they took over that program and let's see over here we have caldwell um they had an uh, the ec installed pollinator pathways and monarch way stations throughout the community they had elementary middle and high schools um, at the library in a pocket park at a church at a convent at the women's club most of the plants were supplied by local garden centers and many of the materials were donated. The parking lot is ADA accessible and made of pervious pavement, great partnerships and excellent learning opportunities all around. And it got a lot of people actively involved. In fact, they were awarded um, an award from ANJEC uh, at our Environmental Congress last year. We uh, awarded them a collaboration award because this project involved the Caldwell EC, West Essex Ministerial Association, St. Aloysius Green Team, Notre Dame Green Team, Agudath Israel Environmental Committee, and Kiwanis of Caldwell, West Essex. So uh, that was a lot of uh, collaborating there. And so creating trust. The key to building strong relationships is to create trust. Now this is a, um, this was a collaboration. This is in South Orange. And this was a collaboration between the Environmental Commission and the um, South Orange Village Center Alliance to create a parklet and rapid lounging program. And this was actually before COVID um, where they were having these outdoor seating areas. So this area right here, these are maybe two parking spaces they took up and they put in this platform and the chairs and they have plants over here. And it's actually very close to, this is the uh, train trestle so people get off the train coming back from New York, you know, you can, uh, you know, you walk off the train and you can maybe have a smoothie and just sit outside and kind of luxuriate. It's a place for people to gather, socialize, relax, and eat from local eateries. It makes it uh, more enjoyable to be shopping locally. So that worked out for people all around that program. 
So dealing with a challenging administration. So as I mentioned before, don't take it personally um, and offer solutions. For example, if there's, there's a project that you wanna do and funding is an issue, then offer other funding options such as grants when you're proposing your projects um, and build your base of support and involve the community and the commission activities and use publicity. Um, definitely use publicity because you want people to know what your commission is up to. Um, and that way you can also get more people interested in your activities. Um, and work on projects that are of interest to the governing body. So uh, let's see. Next, we're moving on to the annual report. So it should include, um, as it says here, a roster of members, meeting dates, list of activities, and consider including the goals for the coming year. Um, the state statute requires ECs not only keep records, um, but also of their meetings, <coughs> excuse me, but they also prepare an annual report. So um, typically this is what it would include. So here's an example from the Somerville Environmental Commission. Um, they had, I found their annual report on, on the uh, website and they have here, as you can see, mission statement, membership, relationships and partners, communications, media, programs, certifications, grants and funding, and self-assessment and total volunteer hours. Um, and I wanted to mention that in our April 1st event, our in-person event, we will be um, uh, sharing our self-assessment tool. So you can assess the um, uh, efficacy of your environmental commission or committee and also get ideas of, uh, you know, maybe you're weak in some area, you think, and, you know, what could you do about that? You know, how could you work on that um, to improve? So um, here's another annual report. This is from Ringwood. As you can see, um, this is prepared for the mayor and borough council. Um, so it's, uh, let's see, what's I gonna say? Um, I can't recommend this highly enough actually uh, to just go and, and uh, present it to your uh, township committee, town council, what have you. Um, because the purpose of the report is to communicate out what you've been doing. And so this way you are communicating out to um, all your elected officials and whoever might be in the room, if it's an actual person or the Zoom room, um, they will learn about what you're doing. And if you're lucky, there will be a reporter in the room or are paying attention on Zoom and you can get an article. So um, that's a really good way to increase the impact of your annual report So as uh, just presenting it before your governing body, reading it into the record. And um, if you have someone who follows uh, local, uh, if you have a local news situation, no, uh, news writers, then they could um, write a, an article about it and that would amplify your message. And then thousand, you know, you could, a couple thousand people maybe will be hearing about what you're doing, not just, you know, the 12 or 20 people or however many are in the actual room. So then we move on to the budget. So EC budgets range from a few hundred dollars or honestly zero. In some cases, they may just uh, reimburse on um, item by item basis, but it's usually a few hundred dollars to several thousand, depending on your goals for the year and what the municipality is willing to invest in your effort. It's important to know that your town's budget cycle is and to be ready when the time comes to make the case for the, uh, the funds that you need. And I'd also like to mention, get to know your township staff. See if you can have photocopying privileges because you know a lot of, you, you can do brochures, flyers, et cetera, and you're not getting involved. It's cheaper than reimbursing you and it's also less of a hassle for everybody involved. So um, I would see what kind of resources are available through your township that you could share. So speaking of resources, ANJAC has a lot of resources that we can share with you. So. Let's see, this is a brochure that I, I believe I, um, we have the link for that that we can throw in the chat. This is just like a two page brochure. You can see uh, over here that we have all these games, the EQ Energy Challenge, Habitat Protection, Green Infrastructure, Plink the Plastic, um, Passaic River uh, uh, Display, Stormwater Display, and Green Infrastructure we also have. Um, you can see that there are handouts over here. Uh, there are a lot of DVDs, documentaries that you can borrow, stormwater display. Um, and then we have these games. We have Plink the Plastic. We have this um, uh, wheel of knowledge, which you can uh, either choose to have it be uh, about your water footprint or your carbon footprint. Um, you can uh, replace the uh, 
these little uh, triangle things and there's separate information in a binder. So you can use it either way. Um, you can take the EQ challenge. It's about energy efficiency, habitat protection game, green infrastructure and climate change pinball. So, so you can borrow these from us and all you have to do is um, contact info at anject.org and uh, tell us what you want. If you want it in April at all, you should put in your reservations soon because it gets pretty uh, busy in April. But it's really nice to have uh, these kind of uh, uh, games and um, displays when you are uh, when you're tabling and when you're out and about with the community, because it really brings people in, they like to play them, and um, it's a and kids really like to to play with them too. Uh, but it's a really good way to bring people in and to educate them about what's going on environmentally. So uh, we also have a lot of resource papers uh, at our website. You can find them under our publications page. And we have, this is just a sampling of them. This is not all of them, but in suit to come, we have one coming up on electric vehicles and land use. I think this is the new land use one right here. So um, those are great resource papers. So you can have, um, we have like physical ones, but we have, um, you can have the PDF and then you can uh, use it at your leisure. And then also handouts. We have these new handouts that we just got from uh, Jersey Waterworks. So um, there are how green infrastructure can improve, improve climate resilience, the impact on equity, um, how it can improve health, increase carbon sequestration. Um, I actually have these four right here. They were put together um, by the Jersey Waterworks Green Infrastructure Municipal Engagement Subcommittee. And um, Chris Abrupta, Dr. Chris Abrupta, who many of you may know, uh, was uh, he worked with his uh, water resources extension program uh, folks, and they did the research for this project. Um, and um, also on the back here, you can, well, you can't really see because of the way this is, but anyway, on the back is the bibliography. So you have all the sources for all that information and you can do a deeper dive into these subjects. Um, but we have, uh, we have handouts on all kinds of uh, topics. So if there's something you need, just contact info at anject.org and let us know and we'll see what we can find for you. So these are all our DVDs. We have um, Bagot. This is your Life 2 Plastic, which is a look into how plastics get into your waterways and our bodies. Um, a look at uh, Plastic Ocean is a look at microplastics in your life. Uh, Poison Waters is about the political obstacles blocking restoration projects. Uh, Highlands Rediscovered, that's a documentary from the New Jersey Highlands Coalition, one of our partners. Um, King Corn, an examination of corn's place in our food system. Groundswell Rising is about hydraulic fracking and civil rights. And um, then there's flow, how did a handful of corporations steal our water? And there's kilowatt hours. Um, Turning the tide is about the Hackensack Meadowlands of Northern New Jersey and the Hamilton Trenton Marsh just south of Trenton. And also just as an aside, um, if you like environmental movies, the Princeton Library, I noticed, I read this yesterday, um, they're having an environmental film festival and it's both, there are both in-person and virtual options. So that's March 24th through April 2nd. Um, I'm sure you can just Google it and find it. Um, but if you like watching uh, environmental documentaries, there are a lot there, but they're not ones that you can screen. These are, these are all ones that you can borrow and you can screen to your communities. So for more viewing options, we have the Anject Views YouTube channel. So we are nearing um, 100 educational videos on our YouTube channel. I think by the time we're finished with this week, we'll probably have surpassed 100. So um, that's very exciting. We have all kinds of topics there. And um, then this is something you'll be getting the link for this after we're done um, with our with our week of training. And you go to the past training resources part of our website. And it's great because not only do you have you'll have the webinar recording, but you also have the actual uh, the the, P, the um, PowerPoint presentations. Um, if there's more than one, you have both of those there. See, and it, there's also the chat transcript will be available and Q and A transcript. So it's a lot, and it kind of takes the stress off of you, so you don't have to worry so much about uh, you know recording everything, writing down everything, because um, you'll be able to have access to it after our training. 
And then, as mentioned before, we have our open space stewardship grants. So you can see here, um, ANJEC funded uh, Tinton Falls EC established an Osprey nest, nest project. There's a pollinator garden with an apiary um, over in West Orange, uh, a pollinator garden in Bergen Hill Park in Jersey City, and also a bird habitat in Alamuchi. So if you go to our website, you'll see examples of previous open space stewardship grants so they can give you inspiration. And, um, and really there's nothing to the application. It's a very simple application. Uh, you just, you have to be an environmental commission and it has to be on green space. Um, but besides that, it's a, I believe it's maybe 900 uh, word uh, uh, for, for the application. And then a one simple, page for the budget, just very simple. So it's not a heavy lift. So um, as has been mentioned before, the deadline is on Monday, April 17th. So why don't you have a look at that and see if there's something that you want to apply for for your town. And with that, I will just say keep in touch. And I am going to stop the share. Uh, let's see, how do I do that? Here we go. Stop the share. And um, I know that was a lot, um, but now you get to hear about the exciting work that some actual um, environmental commissions are doing. And we have here Dan Bachalis from Hamilton and Paul Walitsky from Franklin Township in Somerset County. So um, Dan, do you wanna go ahead and get started? Is there, do you need to share your screen or? Uh, yeah, Sheila, if I, uh, if I may, I, let me pull up, um, I'll need to put a document up. Sure. Uh, if I, as long as I can find it. Um, am, am I sharing now or? How, Not yet. You, let's see. Um, okay, it's green at the bottom, like a green um, uh, screen uh, arrow. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. Yep, yep. Thank you. Yes, we can see it. That's great. Dan, we can't hear you. You're muted. Okay. okay. Now? Yeah. Yep. Very good. All right. All right. All right. All one, right. one more time. Um, just spend a few minutes talking about organizing uh, the Environmental Commission and recruiting members. Um, kind of um, nitty gritty things that uh, you want to keep in mind. I'll tell you, honestly, um, Sheila's presentation. Um, provided enough food for thought for the entire night. I've been taking notes down, so I've got a lot of homework to bring back to my commission also. Uh, but just some, some basic words about organizing and everything. Um, why do we want to organize? And it's, this is a basic question you need to ask yourself just to be sure you've touched base. And the only answer, the only answer is to uh, take action. Um, we are not organized as environmental commissions to um, uh, sit on a wall like a, a nice painting in a living room. We're organized to take action, to review development plans and to advocate on behalf of our uh, uh, local and um, regional and even state or national environment. Um, how do you do that? First, you need to understand the commission's role thoroughly. And as Sheila pointed out, the um, New Jersey state legislation and JSA 40 colon 56A, et cetera, um, provides those, uh, that, that um, explanation of minimum uh, environmental commission uh, powers. You've also got to go to your local enabling ordinance to see if, um, well, to make sure, frankly, that your municipality is encompassing everything that's in the state enabling legislation, and also see if they've added um, additional powers which they're uh, allowed to do. And of course, um, in order to understand the commission's role thoroughly, 
take ANJAC training, which you're doing already. So you're already um, well on the way of understanding that. Uh, the next thing is to establish goals. It's like I've been on committees, uh, not the Environmental Commission, but uh, on committees where you talk about a lot of great ideas, but nothing really gets established and, and, and taken care of. You need to establish clear goals. Um, and um, all those goals may involve multiple objectives or multiple steps, but through the course of the year, um, we have found in, in Hamilton, it's best to, to try to limit your goals. We, we usually keep about a dozen or, or so goals that we're actively working on because inevitably you're gonna have other side things that you're gonna be dealing with through the year. So save some space um, in, your, um, in your dance card, in your action packet for those side things while you're addressing the major goals that you actually want to accomplish. Um, include your routine obligations, development reviews for the planning board, for instance, um, and include things that are specific to your municipality. Um, that'll, all, that'll not only help with your relations with your uh, municipal uh, governing body, but it also shows the folks that you're living with in, in your town, in your city, what have you, that you're relevant to what's going on locally. It could be a needs assessment, and that's ideal um, if you did something formal, but at least um, take the temperature of your municipality to establish what you think the needs are. Um, it could be things coming down the pike, like the plastic bag ban or the new flooding rules that you want to uh, get a jump on. And, and also, as you see possibilities for establishing relationships and partnerships um, with um, local or regional or even statewide uh, bodies or even national bodies, um, as long as they don't take you away too far from your main mission. Um, everybody has an, um, an agenda and sometimes folks' agendas um, match with yours. And if they do take advantage of that, um, could result in, 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 in um, uh, further assistance down the road. Uh, key resources that you need, whether it's data or funding or what have you. Um, once you've got your goals, make sure you know what you're actually trying to achieve. Do you want something that you can actually see, uh, like a pollinator a garden or something? Or is it a um, an environmental process that you want to set up with um, either your organization or your governing body so that they carry on that 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 process or is it um a process you want or you want to help a group in your community to establish so that they can carry that on um, um down the road it's important to establish time frames co for completion and while <clears throat> Frankly, while, while Hamilton tries to establish timeframes within the year, that's not always possible. Um, be open to multi-year projects. Um, try to do realistic planning uh, 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 as much as you can. Try to include things that you can complete within the year, some things at least, so that you've got uh, a sense of accomplishment for the year and um, your end of the year um, party after your December meeting will um, we'll have some reason to celebrate. Um, it's important to track your actions and um, have, a, have a piece of paper. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I like paper. Um, have a piece of paper. Do it on the computer, what have you, so that you can um, record when you achieve particular um, ongoing steps. OK, um, if you're familiar with Gantt charts where you uh, chart everything out in a kind of an Excel spreadsheet or whatever, that's great. But um, doing it in um, in a, a more narrative fashion will be fine. Um, and make sure that when you're talking about these goals, 
you don't walk away from your meeting uh, with your other commissioners or with your subcommittee or what have you without establishing what are the next action steps they're going to be taking, who's going to be responsible for them, uh, what kind of time frame and we'll follow up by phone call or what have you in the next day or two or three or four. Um, it's, and I speak from experience, if you let things go, they will just, they'll go away. Um, so carry your calendar with you, try to make sure the other commissioners have their calendars with them when they're, you're at a meeting so you can, or your subcommittee meetings or um, project meetings so that you can make sure that you keep track of what, um, what people are doing. Um, as I said, we're, we're, we're organized to take action. Um, you have nine, nine formal members, uh, seven members and, and two associates, uh, uh, alternates, pardon me, on your commission. Um, you're going to need to have everybody working um, to achieve these various goals. And not everybody can work on every particular action, okay? Speaking from experience. So you want to make sure that members of your commission take responsibility for acting as the lead um, for, for those particular actions. Now, they may work closely with the, the chair on all of the, on the actions, but they need to be responsible for um, carrying things out and, um, and making things happen. Um, I won't belabor the idea of not loading all the work on one or two commissioners. Um, that happens a, a lot in any community volunteer activity, but um, it's especially important since there are, are frankly so few of us on each commission that we really spread the uh, the load as much as we can and try to uh, make things even out. Okay, don't discount the pot, the uh, the opportunity to get other community members to help, and um, um, the discussion uh, about associate members, junior commissioners, etc., uh, working with um, other civic groups, and I think I talk about this a little later on is really really important. We just um, um, completed a cleanup of not only our Hamilton Lake Park, but also a number of other community uh, areas within the community. And um, we, frankly, we relied heavily on our um, Hamilton Education Association, our teachers, to uh, recruit students. But we also had other folks coming, frankly, from five or six municipalities around, around us to participate in the effort. Um, having people help you with those kind of things is going to lighten the load and get things done a lot faster. Um, once you've established uh, goals and action steps and you've got it on the calendar, make sure you communicate. Um, honestly, communication can, can be, become a real overload. Um, but it's absolutely important, um, no less than once a week, uh, frankly, on, on each particular goal, and probably even more often as you complete steps or if, you, if you've got to talk to somebody and then you need to double check uh, what else you should be doing in that regard, communicate as often as possible. Um, for a lot of us, the work of the Environmental Commission um, is something that we feel passionately about, but we're also living uh, our personal lives. We have families, <clears throat> we have uh, property maybe to take care of, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the work of the Environmental Commission can um, become all consuming. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as you're keeping it in balance with your your, your family life and whatnot. But um, devote as much time as you possibly can to it, because the more you get done, the, frankly, the more satisfied you're going to feel at the end of the day. <clears throat> um, uh, again, as long as you're keeping it in balance with your other obligations. 
Um, so communicate as much as possible. Um, keep folks on, uh, I, I mentioned communicating with commission members. Keep your uh, council members, your governing body liaisons informed of what you're doing. Um, keep other key uh, uh, partners uh, informed on, uh, on that you're um, working with on your project so everybody knows where you're, you're standing. A lot of this is common sense, but a lot of it also gets lost when you're, you're juggling a lot of different projects as you go through the year. Um, recruiting members. Again, who should you be recruiting? Make sure you understand the roles and responsibilities of the commission uh, and, and your, your commission, your specific commission, your commission mission. Um, I didn't realize how that sounded when I wrote it out. Uh, protect and advance in environmental quality. And um, frankly, when I say reset the goalpost, once you've achieved goals uh, in your municipality, move the goalpost a little further so that your municipality becomes even more environmentally um, friendly, okay? Uh, don't be satisfied with um, a particular status quo. Some people might call that social engineering. Uh, other people would co call that saving the planet. Uh, take your opportunity wherever you are in your municipality, whether it's a formal or an informal um, um, gathering to talk up the commission's work, particularly with your local civic religious uh, groups that uh, you may belong to or you're visiting with or you've been invited to present to um, regarding the commission's work or for other things that you're involved in, take the opportunity to slip in a little word about the environmental commission's work. Um, do you have a, um, a local college or a community college or university in your municipality or nearby or in your county that you can um, create a, a partnership with, okay? Um, or do you know somebody in your community who is a professor or a teacher at one of those uh, institutions? Perhaps get them, you know, get talking to them about um, who else you could um, involve from their institution. Um, obviously, if you're having a local festival and tabling events, um, prime opportunity to get the word out. Uh, for years, we used to pile our table with um, flyers and pamphlets and everything that we were working on, and um, it, it got to be a lot. Um, while we keep those materials handy now, primarily what we use is a listing of uh, I'm calling it the ask me about list. Uh, ask me about, and then a series of things that you're working on or that you want people to know about um, and that you can use as a springboard to pull out those materials that you have handy so that they can uh, educate themselves further and uh, hopefully become involved in uh, uh, the commission's work. Um, take the opportunity to cultivate relations with your local news media, um, local and regional as much as possible, um, because they'll get the word out to the residents who will then know exactly what you're doing. And again, they'll see you as more relevant to what's going on in your community. Um, and you never know where those kinds of media connections lead. Um, we did a project on the plastic bag um, ban. We created an octopus out of plastic bags and nj.com called us out of the blue. They knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody in Hamilton and there we were. Um, when you're recruiting, when you're looking at your, your commission, do, what are you? What are the skills, expertise, the interests of the commission, commissioners? Pardon me. Um, how do they relate to your responsibilities on the commission? 
do um, folks need more training? Do they need a skill upgrade or update? Um, and and how how can you best um, how can you best accomplish that? Uh, Sheila's already referenced the Anjek self-assessment tool. Really very helpful and insightful to for for uh, making very simple. Nothing's really simple, but very simple adjustments to uh, the commission's operation. Um, so use that. And um, when you do those things, you will develop a reputation as an engaging body that supports members' development. And your your members will feel that way, and they will be talking to people. Um, if they're anything like the folks in Hamilton, they'll be talking to everybody else in the in the community about about that sort of thing. Um, and then periodically, yeah, I need to interrupt you because you've you've got such great examples. But um, if you are able to wrap up shortly, um, sure, so we can make sure people have a little bit of their evenings uh, yep. back to them. That would be great. Sure thing. Ooh. Very very good. Um, are there are there are there gaps in skills that uh, you need to fill with new commissioners once commissioners' terms expire? Um, we've already talked about. Um, associate commissioners in Hamilton, we call it a friends group, um, totally invaluable for new ideas and for, um, and for future membership. Um, also, you know, scout your community, who's an environmental champion, even if they're, and they're not on a, on, on a formal body, um, who has, um, chatted you up at a, at say a tabling event about your ask me about list um, and can you use them and draw them into uh, the work of the commission? Um, are there artists, are there uh, musicians, are there um, other um, uh, makers in your, in your community that you can um, recruit to help you uh, in, your, in your mission? Um, it's all about, yes, it's all about developing relationships, getting to know community members, um, in Hamilton, we have the approach where if you see somebody you don't know, you just go up and talk to them and say, who are you and what's your life story and uh, who you're related to, et cetera. Don't be afraid to go up and talk to people um, and um, just start chatting them up and finding out about them. Um, frankly, uh, coming from outside of Hamilton years ago, it was a little weird at first, but um, it seems natural is uh, falling off a log at this point. Don't be afraid to make the pitch. Will you come and help us with our XYZ project or come to a meeting or we'd love to have you make a presentation to us about what you're doing on this. And um, uh, Jen knows <laughs> that I maybe talk a little too much, so I'm gonna end here. If you have any questions, um, here's uh, contact information for me and um, the folks at Anjek know how to reach me if you do have any further questions. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. That was that was really great. I appreciated all your um, and, and I hope that we can share that with with the commissioners because I really appreciate that outline and all those points that you have on there about the scheduling and not overloading the, the work onto one or two people and um, balancing work and family life. There are all these really important points that I don't necessarily think of right away when I'm thinking of uh, that kind of about EC work. So I really appreciate you incorporating that. Um, I'll make um, sure um, I, I send it to you so you can share it however you do it magically. Thank you, yes, okay. that's the Liz magic. So um, up next we have Paul Wolitsky from the um, uh, Franklin Township um, Environmental Commission from uh, in Somerset County. So um, I guess okay. Okay. Amy's got his program there. Okay, great. So okay. it's all yours. Thanks very much. Um, and really, I want to thank Sheila in the beginning for having the slide about Franklin Township as well. Uh, the Environmental Commission has nine members, one of which uh, is a past uh, town council member. And of course, one also is, uh, and he happens to now be on the planning board as well. And uh, our um, uh, liaison to the town council is the executive director of the League of Conservation Voters. So we have some skilled people. Each one has different areas that they work on, uh, one on education, uh, one on communication, 
and we shared a planning review and those kinds of things. One of the things that we have done, and we've got a lot of accomplishments over the last few years, is we've gotten into adopt a drain in Franklin Township. This is a national program, which um, we get the citizens involved. You see the slide about New Jersey, Minnesota, Massachusetts, and Washington. And what it does is it asks volunteers to pick a storm drain outside their house, name it, and keep track of it. And um, nationwide, adopted drain has picked up 582,000 pounds of uh, debris that would have gone into the rivers and streams because the neighbors have picked it all up. So, um, and here in Jersey, we've done this now in Franklin Township, and we have a few hundred people. Um, as he, here's the, the list though of the 3.2 million, and it's been growing. It is done through Hamlin University in Minnesota. They set up the program for us and that's where the fees come in. Uh, but as we mentioned uh, before, um, it was mentioned that you get involved with the DPW and they love the program because it frees up some of the people. It gets things done without having to get staff out to, to unblock drains and those kinds of things. We tell people don't go in the drain, just stop stuff from going in it. That's the important part. Um, so let's see what we have as the next slide. Right, I have the address also for, for Hamlin university you can just put it actually in the website on the, on the google search or wherever uh, hamlin university adopt a drain and they are in saint paul actually in, in uh, minnesota and what they've done is they have mapped out all the drains in franklin township now we're a big place we got seventy thousand, almost seventy thousand people and if you go from one end of town to the other you can drive 10 miles and still be in franklin township from princeton down near kingston all the way up here to uh, bordering New Brunswick and uh, Man Manville on the other side. We also have two rivers. We've got the Raritan and we've got the Millstone. And some of the drains, the storm drains, go into those rivers. So adopt the drain again is a help in keeping those rivers clean. Um, we did, it is a couple thousand dollars, but as, the, as Sheila had mentioned earlier, um, the DPL, when we heard, when the DPW heard about this, they were very enthused about it. And we have a township uh, manager type of government in Franklin, and he also got behind it. All the staff works for him, and uh, the town council went and approved the money, and we're going to keep going. Um, and there's some fun to it as well. Let's see what the next slide says. Anything? I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, what happens is that um, the people adopt the drain in front of their house, like I did in front of mine, and you give it a name. Mine says Gail's Drain. She sees my girlfriend lives two doors down. Uh, the guy across the street called his Charlie's Drain. And what you get is a list from, um, from Hamlin that lists uh, the names of the drains, the people who did it, and how much they've picked up. Now, you don't need a precision scale you know, to do this. You pick up a couple bottles, you pick up some leaves, you put it in the garbage or in recycling, if it's plastics and such, and people report 2.4 pounds, four tenths of a pound. One of the Commissioner Stan, um, who is president of the environment in the Electric Vehicle Association of New Jersey, is again part of the talent. Uh, he calls his Stan Cyclone Drain. And people go out like every other week or so and see mine's been clean because we're in a development that has a lot of landscaping people that, that do clean. But it really has uh, been a help. And um, again, I like to slide here with safety first and you don't, as I said, you don't go into the drain. Busy streets, in our community, this is an active adult community, and we've got about 2,000 people living here, six miles of streets. And what happened was some of the people went out and couldn't find it, the drain wasn't on the map. So the, the, the uh, program manager for here, for Canal Walk, he gave me a complete map of all the drains in Canal Walk. We sent it out to Minneapolis, and they added it to the map. They administered a website. And that's where part of it comes in and doing the work of, of getting it all set up. Um, and so it's been work. It's, it's been a good, a good uh, paper enthused about it. A lot of fun when you start, but it really does make a difference. Uh, what's the next slide look at? Um, oh, minimal command. Yeah, the volunteers are not, a, I said, you go out and look, okay, it's clean. Oh, it's not, I go get a waste paper basket and a, and a, a broom and a something and you pick it up. So it's not a lot of time, but people appeal feel the helping, and it really does make a difference. Um, reduction in pollutants, fire, and stormwater. On our drain 
um, things. It says this drain goes to the Raritan River or a nearby river, and we want to keep those those clean. Um, and it's part of the education process. It gets it. We do have a um, a quarterly newspaper from the community from the township, and this gives this was in that and that got people to sign up across the across the township. Um, they do get they do give you the reports and um, and list all this stuff. And uh, we can see we've got, um, uh, we, our township has removed, according to this report, 757 pounds in this time period. So the biggest difference, keep, it keeps it going. It's free and voluntary to the, the community. The township picks up the upfront cost. But, um, and it's, it's an ongoing program. We're doing a lot of other things as well. We're gonna do a stream cleanup uh, around um, Earth Day, which we usually do. And we have a lot of a couple streams going through. Besides the two rivers, we've got six mile run and one mile, and a couple other tributaries, and those get debris around the sides. People, people seem to throw stuff out their windows, and it ends up along the streams. And once a year, we'll go in, and we're also there getting like 30, 40 people working on the cleanup. Uh, we have a couple groups that we get the volunteers and all, but um, and this is part of it. So the the adopted drain has been a big success, I think. Uh, not um, flaming with headlines or anything. Ah, here's here's some of the costs. Uh, so it costs us eight thousand dollars to start with, and then it goes down a little bit. Uh, the fee set up to set up the mapping and all that, and it's easy to get on the the website. There's a membership fee, and um, and then also they send you a kit to each person that volunteers. They send you a sign that you can put in your mulch bed that says we're part of the program. And um, and we get an annual report and and those types of things. So um, it's not a big from a budget standpoint. This is chicken feed. Um, you know we're we are like say sixty thousand almost seventy thousand people. So you know another seventy two hundred dollars pays for itself. It really does in, in what you save in the D, DPW costs. So uh, that's the and we did get a, uh, the township council passed the resolution added that to the budget. And now it's an annual thing that we do. So, uh, what else can we tell you about uh, Sheila or um, Dean? I know was it no? Here's there's, there's the metal signs and such. I've got one. Somebody asked. Somebody said there last night in the we had an environmental meeting last night in the environmental commission. We get big turnout. We had about seventy five people because the township uh, residents are fighting a warehouse and want to keep the um, the scenic byways and stuff as they are. Uh, so people came, we gave them a public right to speak, and then we attach that to the, the things we do about the building plans. So this is what they're doing. Uh, they do upside, and Hamlin is doing a nice job uh, with the picket signs. And again, here you see that the um, uh, M, the M has four permit obligations and the cost to the DPW. But get mean, you get a, a couple of men out there cleaning drains, you go through $7,200 in a, in, a, in a flash. So um, it is a, a nice, here's, here's the website. Oh, this is the one for West, West, uh, Westfield. But uh, and that was mentioned, I think, earlier when, when you did your talk. Um, and it, if you just, I did that this evening. If you just put in um, Adopt a Drain New Jersey, and you'll get to see what we're doing on a statewide basis. So that's, that's what we've done. Um, I know it's getting later than we all thought, which is why I tried to speed things up a little bit. But um, we appreciate the uh, activity, and if if I can get it, we'll see what happens. I'll go down to Fort Mormon. So I'll see. I'll see if I can get that done. And um, you have to get the approvals, obviously, in the contract. But it, it went fast. Um, yeah, you don't want to do areas where there's high. I mean, we've got uh, Western Canal Road, which is a county road, and we got Elizabeth, which is a county road, and we're right along 287, which is a major interstate highway. Which is why warehouses like us, unfortunately, <laughs> you know. So, but Dina, you, know, you got a, a look at that last night. You you got to hear all the comments, yeah. and um, uh, we've got. I, I want to say again back to the commission. The was interesting last night is that the people that were there really expressed the fact that the environmental commission was on their side, and that was I thought really a a, a tribute to the kind of rapport we've gathered with the community. Um, we, we're trying to help and, and they seem to appreciate it. And that's, that's a good thing, I think. I agree. 
<laughs> it was um, it was wonderful to see all the support the environment commission got, especially with seventy five folks in, in the room. You're sort of um, proud. <laughs> yes, and and thank you for this. I'm going to stop share, and in just the last couple of minutes, we'll we'll just answer a question or two. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks very much for the opportunity. Liz, you're muted. Sorry, we yes, we all really want to thank you, Dan and Paul, for participating. It really means a lot to environmental commissions to see people that are actually doing this boots on the ground. And of course, Sheila, a wonderful presentation. Um, we have one question I thought it might be great to share with the group about, and uh, has anyone ever had an apathetic members? If so, how do you go about motivating them or even replacing them? Anja gets this call quite often, as you might imagine, I'm sure Paul and Dan know what we're talking about. And Dan talked about recruiting and making sure you get people that are interested, but, um, some of that can be explained by Sheila with making sure bylaws. So if you miss a bunch of meetings, you're not going to be reappointed. So any other ideas, uh, Paul? First. Well, we've our, we haven't had that. Uh, we've had people resign because of the pressure of other business, some of them working, and you know that kind of thing. Um, and really, we've got a waiting list of people who want to be on the commission. We've wow. only got nine openings. We've got a former town council lady, Raj Sherman, who's doing stuff outside. She's asked me, can she get on? A couple other people have said the same thing. We haven't, we haven't, you know, somebody, if, if they're apathetic, they, they're not going to hang around. Because I guess the rest not. Of people That's are amazing. Hard. Good for you. Wonderful. Uh, Dan, you have anything to add? You guys also yeah, um in addition to the in, in addition to the environmental commission and I, I will try to make this quick in, in addition to the environmental commission over the years uh I, i've chaired and still chair a number of other committees in town and and yeah occasionally you you run into people who who really don't don't show up and you you try to work with them and you know encourage them to attend after a year or so of of you know, majority not attending the meeting, you might want to talk to them and say, listen, I know you've had trouble getting to the meetings. Um, if this is, you know, a time in your life when you've got to attend to other things, don't worry. Um, we will keep you on a friends of uh, the environmental commission or, or friends of whatever committee so that you stay in touch with what's going on in, in the, in the group, but you don't have to, the burden burden of going to the meetings um i never had to i mean i like the idea of putting in your bylaws that you miss so many meetings you're out it's very clear cut uh and then you can negotiate from there i guess um but uh, in the absence of that basically if you try to approach them and say obviously you've got other things that you need to be working on in your life you're a lot of work things or what have you. Um, in some cases, you know, people try to step up and 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 get back uh, get back in the game. And in most cases, frankly, in my experience, people say, "Yeah, I really can't. I really can't do this now." You know, but I appreciate your keeping me um, on the emails uh, as a copy, so that at least I know what's going on. Um, so they haven't lost in, in, in touch entirely. And it's it's not like you're kicking them out into the cold. That's right. Really appreciate it. I'll just Thanks, add Dan. a little bit, um, and people can can obviously connect with Anjak, but continuous recruitment is really important. So if you do get in a situation where you have somebody who just has other priorities, whether it's you know their family, their job, you know, other interests, um, health. And they need to step away and you need to have that that hard, honest conversation with them that you've got a strong bench. You've got, um, you know, you might not have 75 people coming to your meeting in a long <laughs> list like Paul does. <laughs> yeah. do that. It's not always, but that, it was a, a particular issue. Particular so. hot issue, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You want to do continuous recruitment and you want to look at what your community looks like and re recruit from all different sectors of your community. You want to have diversity in age, in race, in gender, in um, religious affiliations, if that's important in your community. So you wanna make sure that your environmental commission represents your community, as well as looking at what do you need on a regular basis? Do you regularly find yourself um, 
you know, just stumped by landscape architects and just not being able to understand the Latin. I'm, I'm bad with plants. You want to deal with water? I'm your girl. But plants, I, I hated every minute of Latin. I took it, but we didn't get the plants. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, you know, I would always look for a landscape architect. Help me, somebody who knows plants. So look at what your needs are as well as your, your community and build that bench continuously. Um, and we, we can brainstorm with you on, on ways to do that. So then you've, you've got options. We're going to need some help. We're going to do the energy plan and then the climate action plan and then add the sustainability element to the master plan because we want to go for an ordinance at the end to make people put solar cells on their roofs. And we need right. to do all that backup Paul's stuff keep first. Us busy. I was going to say, we're going to, we're going to come back to Anjak and say, hey, we could, we could use some help. That sounds exciting. All right. I think, Liz, is that the end of our questions for tonight? Sorry, I was muted again. Yes, I think we are good. I want to thank everybody for attending. It's been a great hour and a half. And we we'll hope we'll see some of you tomorrow at noon and at seven and noon and seven again on Thursday. And obviously April 1st in person. If any of you have not signed up for that, just let us know. We'll get you signed up. Good night, everybody. Again, thanks, thanks everyone. Good night. Good thanks night. for being here with us. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Paul. Good night. Hey, bye -bye. You're welcome. Thanks a lot.